This is a laptop. Actually, it's kind of more like two laptops. Sure, you can use it basically like a Surface Pro, but give it a fold and suddenly you have two displays in one. You can use it on the go, you can draw on it, and you can multitask with it, maybe. But is this foldy boy really all that it's cracked up to be? Well, there's a lot to unfold there. <laughs> right after I fold all of this into a segue to our sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by KiwiCo. KiwiCo ships out crates that contain hands-on projects for kids to help develop their creative confidence and problem-solving skills. Learn more at the end of the video or at the link below. First off, this display is awesome. The X1 Fold is a 13-inch 4x3 OLED display with deep blacks, vibrant colors, and a max brightness of 300 nits. 300 nits? Uh, shh! Being a folding device, you might expect an ugly, awful seam. <coughs> Samsung! But in reality, it's virtually non-existent. Sure, the, the seam itself is there, and if the display is off, the light distortion is fairly apparent. But when it's on, it's barely noticeable, even to touch. The hinge does take two hands to open and close, but it's smooth and there are no creaking noises to be heard. In addition, the bezels surrounding the display are raised and made out of a soft rubber material that prevents the display from folding onto itself, so there isn't any worry of it being damaged while folding it. Now with a display this cool, the rest of the device should be too, right? Well, on the surface it is. It has a real leather folio cover on the back that gives it a sleek, professional look. Ooh. Plus, this little bit folds out to function as a kickstand. With the optional fold keyboard, you've gone from an eight inch folded device to a 13 inch tabletop computer. There's an optional stylus for the X1 Fold called the Lenovo Pen Pro, which has a hexagonal design reminiscent of those things called pencils people used in the before times. It feels good to draw and take notes with on the X1 Fold's OLED display. And while it's 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity doesn't compare to a dedicated drawing tablet and stylus from say, Hueon, it's more than adequate for the average user. However, in Krita, it seemed to randomly panic and become misaligned on the canvas, which we weren't able to fix. Uh, but it works fine in Photoshop and OneNote. I mean, this is a first gen device, which is super apparent given the way the Pen Pro charges because, uh, yeah, it charges via a USB-C cord in a market that has become largely saturated with inductively charged styluses or entirely battery-free ones. But hey, a first-gen first gen device, it folds. Can you, can you, that's pretty cool. Let's talk about the keyboard. Despite being just four millimeters thick, it feels like what you'd expect from a device with ThinkPad branding. There's a distinct tactile bump and decent key travel for a keyboard so thin. I'd go as far to say this is the best small form factor ultra thin keyboard I've ever used, I think. Back to the fold though. Coming in at 999 grams for the base model with no additional hardware, it is lighter than basically every laptop on the market. Sure, it is 36% heavier than the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, but that is a smaller device and once again, can't fold, it can't do this. I can't think of any backpack or briefcase that this wouldn't fit into comfortably. I mean, it would even look good on a bookshelf. Wait, 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 no, no, Alex, no. Now, looking good is one thing, but being a good laptop, well, that's something else entirely. Right away, this thing gets points for the nano SIM slot, which is awesome if you need a private internet connection while on the go. And that's the only positive thing that I have to say. Aside from that, you get two USB type C ports that are good for charging, but unfortunately they don't have Thunderbolt. But even if it did have Thunderbolt, they don't have a headphone jack. What makes this even worse is that if you use this device in unfolded mode, AKA like, you know, when you might want to be charging and have peripherals connected at the same time, one half of your ports is underneath it. <laughs> now, given it's half a chonker, you might think that there's some powerful hardware in here, but you thought wrong. In here, we get an Intel Core i5 with Intel hybrid technology, AKA Lakefield. And as we discussed multiple times on this channel, Lakefield sucks. 
It sucked so hard that while we were making this video, it was discontinued. It's like a year old CPU. Lakefield was essentially Intel's first attempt at a big little style CPU with a single large core handling powerful and demanding tasks with four smaller low power cores able to take care of normal program and background tasks. In theory, this is supposed to get you more power without sacrificing battery life and incredible standby times, but it, it doesn't. Lenovo advertises 10 hours of video playback on this thing with a 50 watt hour battery, which sounds fine until you look at basically anything else. This is the HP Dragonfly Max, which has a super powerful Tiger Lake i7 with XE graphics, and it gets 17 hours of battery life from a 56 watt hour battery. And things just get worse from there for a poor Lakefield CPU. <laughs> Compared to even the i7 1165G7 in our Spectre X360, uh, although not cheap, much cheaper laptop, the CPU isn't even half as fast. Opening multiple general use applications can become super sluggish. Like, what is this, 2005? <laughs> These days you can expect a thin and light device to be okay for video editing, light gaming, and even CAD. I would not do any of those things on the Lenovo Fold. The biggest kick in the nuts though, you're getting this Atom level performance in a device that costs $2,500 starting for the privilege of folding it in half. The keyboard and stylus, another 250 bucks. That money could definitely be better spent on our merch at lttstore.com. These water bottles, they're good. <laughs> To be fair to Lenovo, this isn't really their fault, and they aren't marketing this as a device for gamers or creators. Honestly, I don't really know who they're marketing for. C-suite hipsters, I guess? I mean, like, fair enough. It does look pretty cool, but you definitely don't look cool if you record yourself on the built-in webcam. All right, that's enough. Jeez Louise. Freaking Alex. <sighs> okay, fine, look. The Fold may not be a compelling value or a high performance device, but what it does have is cool factor. The folding display tech here is only gonna get cheaper and better over time. Imagine a device like this, but one as thin as a proper Ultrabook without the giant bezels. Look, think of it this way. At a glance, this seems like either a tablet that folds down to become more portable or a tiny dual screened netbook, but I would argue that this is in fact a laptop that can simultaneously exist in multiple form factors. It can either be a seven inch netbook, a dual screen laptop, a 13 inch tablet for drawing, or a 13 inch laptop with a Bluetooth keyboard. All of which folds down into a small, easy to carry book-like form factor. And that's what makes this so cool. I mean, why wouldn't you want this form factor over a regular laptop? This is an actual, real product that fits a lot of different use cases simultaneously. Sure, it is hard to recommend this until the internals improve and the price drops, but it isn't hard to get excited. I can't wait to see what Lenovo comes out with next because we may be living in that folding future very soon. A future with more segues just like this one to our sponsor. Thanks once again to KiwiCo for sponsoring today's video. They're a monthly subscription service to help introduce and make STEAM topics fun and engaging for kids of all ages. They believe if you start learning small things today, you can produce world-changing ideas tomorrow. Each crate is designed by experts and contains everything you need to complete it and detailed kid-friendly instructions. This means you don't need to run off to the store to get extra supplies like glue or scissors or glitter, which you shouldn't get anyways. KiwiCo offers eight subscription lines, each catering to different age groups and topics. The crate we have here is at a Kiwi level for kids ages five to eight that'll teach programming and robotics. Another one is the Eureka level for your teens ages 14 and up, which highlights basic engineering and sound practices. KiwiCo is a great way to keep kids occupied for hours and they now ship to over 40 different countries. So fight summer brain drain today at kiwico.com Linus and get your first month for free. Hey, thanks for watching guys. If you're looking for something else to watch, maybe check out the last video about a device with a folding display we did, which was probably the Galaxy Z Fold 2. And I don't remember what Linus had to say about that. He liked it. it he liked it, so yeah. <laughs> it's a good sign.